Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the, adoption, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know I am with you as I was with Moses. Now, command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come to a halt in the Jordan when you reach the edge of the waters. 
So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that there is a living God in your midst, who at your approach will dispossess the Canaanites, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the whole earth, will precede you into the Jordan. When the soles of the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, touch the water of the Jordan, it will cease to flow. For the water flowing down from upstream will halt in a solid bank. The people struck their tents to cross the Jordan with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant ahead of them. No sooner had these priestly bearers of the Ark waded into the waters at the edge of the Jordan, which overflows all its banks during the entire season of the harvest, then the waters flowing from upstream halted backing up in a solid mass for a very great distance indeed. From Adam, a city in the direction of Saratan, while those flowing downstream toward the salt sea of the Arabah disappeared entirely. Thus the people cross over opposite Jericho, while all Israel cross over on dry ground, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remain motionless on dry ground in the bed of the Jordan until the whole nation had completed the passage. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of alien tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his domain. Alleluia. The sea beheld and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skip like rams, the hills like the lambs of the flock. Alleluia! Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back? You mountains, what you skip like rams? You hills like the lambs of the flock? Alleluia! The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, 
his children and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, while the parable of Jesus in our gospel today is obviously about forgiveness, about God who never gets tired in forgiving us, and about our need to forgive one another, the parable of Jesus in today's gospel also talks of justice. There was an injustice that happened. The servant who was forgiven by the king of his huge debt refused to forgive a fellow servant who owed him a smaller amount. And he even asked his fellow servant to be imprisoned until he had paid the debt in full. What an injustice. And the parable of Jesus tells us that the other servants who saw the whole affair were deeply disturbed. They were disgusted at what that servant did to a fellow servant. And because of their disgust, they went to their master and reported the whole affair. And the master exacted justice from this unjust servant. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many injustices happening around us. I need not mention them. We just open our eyes, read the news, see what is happening, and we will see that injustices are happening around us. Many people are suffering 
because they are victims of injustice. And many times, we ourselves are becoming victims of injustice without us knowing it. The question is, in the face of all these injustices happening around us, are we disturbed? Are we distressed? What are we doing? Or are we just keeping our silence? Are we like the fellow servants who could not take the injustice that happened? That they need, they felt the need to do something in order that justice may prevail. In our first reading today, the Israelites crossed the Jordan River in the same way that they crossed the Red Sea during the time of Moses. And they are now preparing to enter the Promised Land. The Promised Land is a sign of their liberation from oppression and injustice. But God needed people like Moses and now like Joshua in order that his plan of liberating his people and giving them justice may happen. God needs us so that justice may prevail. My dear brothers and sisters, as good Christians, what are we doing to defend those who are victims of injustice in our society? As good Catholics, what are we doing that justice may prevail? Are we indifferent? Are we just silent? Don't we feel the need to do something so that there will be justice? The Archbishop, the Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, In situations of injustice, if you remain neut neutral in situations of injustice, then you have chosen the side of the oppressor. My dear brothers and sisters, if we just keep silent in the face of injustice, we ourselves have become unjust. Let us pray to God that as His people who have experienced His forgiveness, we may bring the joy of reconciliation to the world. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of God, set free by the blood of Christ, may not be divided in factions, but live in tolerance and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those embittered by injuries and wrongdoings may cast away resentment from their hearts and be open to the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those among us who find it difficult to forgive, may realize God's generous mercy for everyone, and may, be, and, we, and may we be able to forgive from our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that those of us 
who feel the deep wounds of physical and spiritual injuries may find healing in the Lord's forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may be forgiven of their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our own petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, look with compassion on our failures. Deliver us from hardness of heart and grant that we may be always ready to forgive hurts and heal divisions. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word, and, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. Be Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot 
at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah.